Hey, I don't want you to miss all the cutest and coolest clothing that you can buy in Japan, so I put together this guide on how to shop in Tokyo. I've been to Japan several times, I've shopped in Shibuya and Harajuku multiple times. I live in the US, so I'll be comparing my experience shopping here with there, there being Tokyo. A lot in this video. My style is on the quirky, colorful, and kind of outlandish side. I like to buy statement pieces, especially when I go to Japan. So if your style is more subdued, simple, or elegant, this might not be the guide for you, but at least you'll be able to take away the social and cultural differences to keep in mind while you're shopping. Now if you want more personal shopping stories, make sure you comment below and let me know. Or if you've shopped in Japan before and have any tips, make sure to comment as well. All right, let's get on to my general experience and to the tips. One of the niftiest advantages of shopping as a foreigner is that you can participate in the consumption tax exemption program. Essentially, this means as a foreigner or traveler to Japan, you're eligible to only be charged the pre-tax price for an item. When you take your item or items to the register, they'll only charge you for the price minus the 8% consumption tax. Now this assumes that you spend at least 5,000 yen at a store, any less, and you can't get that special pre-tax price. Now let's say you go into a store and you find all these accessories, clothing, souvenirs that you wanna buy, or that you really think you're going to purchase before you leave, I recommend that you show your passport ahead of time to a shopkeeper so that when you're done and you're ready to get everything rung up, that they're ready to go through that process of taking off the consumption tax. Um, because it does take a little while to go through that process. Basically the process is they stamp your receipt as proof that the purchase is tax exempt and then staple the receipt into your passport. They'll staple the receipt into the empty visa pages, so make sure you order more pages. I'm running out of pages in your passport so they can staple it. If you've run out of pages, they'll just hand the receipt to you and ask you to keep it safe just in case you need to show it to anyone at the airport. Another reason why you should show your passport ahead of time to a shopkeeper is that not all stores participate in the tax exemption program. At least you'll know ahead of time whether or not you'll get the consumption tax off or not. Something else to keep in mind is that large stores like Don Quixote have categories of items that are tax exempt and categories of items that you still have to pay tax for. It's not always easy to tell which items are tax exempt or require you to pay the tax, so You'll know once you get to the register and they ring you up, they'll separate into piles. For these stores, there are often separate registers for tax exempt purchases, so just keep that in mind uh, to look for signs ahead of time before you get in line so you don't have to you know, run up and down floors like we've done before to find out that you can't purchase any of your items at this register because it's only for Japanese citizens or those that um, are paying tax on their purchases. An example of an item that is not tax exempt is sheet masks. For example, when I went to the Pokemon Center store in Tokyo, they told me that I had to get more items that were tax exempt because sheet masks are considered consumables that I could technically wear or use before leaving Japan and I had to find items that I could leave Japan that I wouldn't consume right away something to that effect, so because I didn't have 5,000 yen worth of items without the sheet masks, adding to that tax exempt portion of my purchase, I had to go find other items to get to 5,000. That's the only item I know off the top of my head that I definitely did not get tax exempt for. If you have any specific examples, comment below and let us all know. But yeah, I really enjoy this consumption tax exemption program. It's very encouraging for us foreigners traveling and shopping for fashion or cute things to buy more things when we're there. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. It's a good thing to me. <laughs> okay, so the first tip incorporated other types of shopping besides just fashion, but the second tip is really to think about what your style is. And what I mean by this is think about what 
kinds of new additions you want to add to your wardrobe based on the style that you wear. Do you wear punk? Do you wear business? Do you wear more of a cute style? That's going to direct where you shop. I would make a list, mental or physical, whatever floats your boat, uh, because the brands and types of style differ by ward, so if you don't want to waste time running around or if you don't have too much time to peruse, I would make sure you nail this ahead of time. I'd say as a general guide for cool, trendy, or seasonal fashion, I would head to Shibuya. Shibuya has awesome brands that tiptoe on the edge of fashionable, but don't go too overboard. For my elegant or business attire wearing ladies, I would go there. Even then I would keep in mind that the business attire you would find there could be full of lace, or frills. I think it's really just the nature of Japanese fashion. They like to have those little bells and whistles that I personally love, but just to give you a heads up. Should you be on the lookout for more artistic, weird, or bold colors and prints bordering on the underground? Harajuku is where it's at. They do have some of the cool, in trendy styles, but there's a lot more of deco, lolita, punk, or even fetish styles and brands that you can find. There are brands that have presence in both Shibuya and Harajuku, such as Azisa for example, but not all stores are like this, and you're still more likely to find more of those artistic underground designers in Harajuku versus Shibuya. I personally love both Shibuya and Harajuku because I love mixing and a contrast of styles. Shops tend to open from 10 to 11 a.m. and close at 9 or 10 p.m., which I consider to be pretty standard. My only tip here is that if you want to get photos in Takeshita Dori, for example, or crossing Shibuya Ichimaru Q without too many people in your way, or have a more calm experience taking photos, take photos before the shops open or after they close at night. There was something about standing in Takeshita Dori where there was almost no people at night that made it eerily kind of a cool experience. Of course, there's less chance of people getting in your way or you getting in the way of other people's photos taking pictures at these two times. Many of you might be worried that you might not be able to communicate well with shopkeepers if you have any questions um, because it's hard for you to speak Japanese or you don't know how to speak Japanese and English isn't widely spoken in Japan. Fortunately for many of you, I've seen over the years that there are more shopkeepers that are of Chinese, Korean, or uh, have an origin from another country besides Japan that work at fashion stores that will be able to help you if you can't speak Japanese that well. I've noticed that there are more shopkeepers that are trilingual, so they will be Chinese, and they'll know Chinese, Japanese, and English. There's been a huge influx of travel to Japan, so it's been interesting to see how Japanese society is changing to help facilitate better communication between foreigners and native Japanese people. I'm also seeing now, compared to seven or eight years ago, that there are more signs in multiple languages, such as Chinese, Korean, and English that are being used in stores or made for foreigners to better understand and have a better shopping experience. <laughs> this whole evolution of communication has definitely been helpful to me. I was shopping for bras and the shopkeeper helping me was Chinese and she could also speak English. So it was easier for me to effectively communicate any needs or requirements I had trying on bras. Honestly, I need to get my butt into gear and speak Japanese more. Um, especially if you travel to other parts of Japan, you won't be so lucky with shopkeepers that can speak multiple languages. But the fact that there is a lot more language accommodation doesn't mean that I can't practice my Japanese. I really do need to get my butt into gear and speak Japanese more. The etiquette for trying on clothes could be honestly a whole other video since there's so many cultural and societal norms even with shopping. But here are a few rules to quench your curiosity if you do have curiosity about these etiquette rules. One is for changing rooms, you always need to take your shoes off and there's usually a uncovered or 
hard floor space in front of the changing room where you can leave your shoes. One aspect I really appreciate about Japan is how they're all about cleanliness and the changing room is no exception for that. They really try to keep everything hygienic, for example, to protect the clothes from your makeup smears when you're pulling on a sweater, for example. They provide thin sheets to block your face from smearing or rubbing your makeup onto the clothing. The thin sheets actually remind me of toilet seat covers. Wherever you go, the shopkeepers are also super helpful and they will check in with you constantly to make sure things are okay. One thing I've noticed that at least I don't notice here in the US as much or um, in other countries that I've done a bit of shopping in is that if you want to try on a skirt, they will often hand you a sweater to try on with that skirt that they've paired on the mannequin or some of the shop girls have worn on themselves because it's supposed to be a fit for that item as a pair. I find that kind of pair recommendation very interesting um, and helpful too to kind of gauge what goes with this top or skirt. So if you're someone that needs help pairing items, they're very helpful when it comes to that aspect of trying on clothing at the store. For more Japanese shopping etiquette tips, let me know so I can make another video on that. One very Japanese shopping event you might witness or take part in is the time sales. Now time sales are where during specific times of the day, regularly priced items will go down to 50 or 70% off. They could be more, but those are the discounts that I've seen and the discounts will only be effective for a certain time period. So they might only have a time sale for an hour or for 20 minutes, maybe a few hours. You will know when a time sale is happening. In Shibuya Ichimaru Q, for example, when there's a time sale, there will be a shrill chorus of girls screaming, time sale. <laughs> beckoning you to come into their store and get that discount. During the time sale, there are also girls from different stores walking around the floor together in Shibuya Chimari Q, yelling time sale, and they'll be holding a sign that has a camera and it's crossed out. That means you can't film. Time sales also happen in individual stores, not just a collection of stores at a mall like Shibuya Chimari Q. So if you're lucky, you'll be able to get a significant discount on some pieces you might want to purchase. Last but not least, not all stores accept credit cards, so make sure you have cash on you at all times. Um, I would say the amount of cash that you should have on you really depends on how much damage you want to do with shopping, um, but I would also keep in mind that many stores have a minimum spend required to even use your credit card. They might require you to spend 5,000 yen before you can even use your credit card, for example. Japan in general is still a cash-heavy society, so it's always a good idea to have some cash on you. And what's nice is that there are convenience stores everywhere that have ATMs, where you can withdraw cash as needed. So if you need some cash, dash over to the 7-Eleven or Family Mart. Okay, boom, 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 we got through the tips. I hope that this video was useful. I hope that it wasn't too scattered. I tried to cover a variety of topics, but if you want me to focus on anything specifically, such as etiquette or different types of shopping scenarios, not just fashion, or if you want me to go even deeper into how to shop for specific styles in Japan, let me know. I would love to help. I post mainly fashion videos, but I also do some travel and food videos. Please subscribe so you don't miss any future content from me. Give me a like to tell me that you enjoyed this and that I should make more of this type of video. Have a lovely, fashionable day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!